Welcome back to Coding Shorts. I'm Sean Wildermuth. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about Vite and building for production. Now this all started because I needed to build for production and I needed to change some things because I was working with a back end. Using Vite and just deploying to simple applications or simple web servers, not a big deal. But when I want to customize that build, it involves some more moving pieces. And that's where this episode came from. Let's take a look. So today I want to talk about Veet. Veet is what I use when I'm building a few applications, Vue 3 applications specifically, in the recent past. Um, I used to use the CLI and it has some benefits and some great things, but the experience of just running a Veet app in the browser and not having really a compilation step is a huge win. And I've been doing that for a while now and I really like it. Uh, one of the things if we look at the package that JSON for a Veet app is it's going to include several scripts. I've actually removed the preview one, so ignore that you might have a preview one even though I don't, because I really just need dev, which is to run the application, or to build it. And if I go ahead and build this, this script is doing two things. It's calling view TSC, which is a wrapper around a TypeScript uh, checker, uh, linter, uh, just to see and make sure that you don't have any TypeScript errors before it goes to build, and then it builds it. So let's run this for a minute. And what it shows here when it builds is that it's building a new dist folder. That's the default is to create a dist folder inside of our project. And then it exports the index.html and several files here. And these files are going to be different based on your VDAP. But in my case, I have a main index file that has most of my code. And then I have a CSS file that is frankly pretty big and mostly because I'm using Bootstrap. And so uh, the Bootstrap CSS doesn't know how to make it all that small for the kind of things I'm doing. And then there's a vendor.js that includes a bunch of view stuff. And if we take a look at this dist folder and we actually just, let's open it in a new window. And I'm doing this specifically so that I can just take our application that we had and tell it to go live and see that our application works. Like this isn't running under V, this is a compiled application, it has a ugly home page, it has a login page that works no matter what. But just for us to have a very simple example and see that everything really does work, we're hosting it on a local host and it all is just happy. This is fine for most development, right? If I'm going to take and deploy this out into some static website, it, this is about all I need, right? I need to just have these files. And if you're not that familiar, these magic numbers inside of the index.js and CS as well as the vendor are to break the cache. It's a hash of the file to produce a magic number. And this magic number guarantees that when someone visits it after they've already been to the website before, that it gets the new version and not the one that may have been cached in the browser. It's a common technique to go ahead and break that asset. And so I want to change some of the ways that this build happens because I want to host this, let's say, on an ASP.NET Core website. Now, whether you're using ASP.NET Core or using some other backend, the problem is pretty common where I want to be able to change where this goes. And the magic there really happens down here in Vite. So in Vite, you can add a build section to the configuration. And one of the first things you'll see is output directory. And this is where you're going to specify where the build happens. And in my case, I'm going to put it in a WW root folder. And I'll just say app. Now, normally this would be some longer path to wherever my ASP.NET application is. But for our use, I'll just have it create a different folder structure here. And if we run that build again, we can see we're now getting that WW root. So that output directory just worked in the same way and just put it in a different place in our project. Not so interesting, frankly. And one of the other things I wanted to change was being able to run this within the context of an ASP.NET project as well. And so we can't use Vite to really do that. So instead, what we're going to do, because Vite does some magic things when it's hosting in its own page, is I'm going to create a new section or a new script inside the build called Watch. I want to be able to essentially run the build and anytime a change happens, rebuild it. And so I'm going to say Vite 
build. Now I could also do the view TSC, which is doing uh, a linting of the TypeScript, and I happen to be using TypeScript. But for the watch, I'm going to ignore it because obviously the build will fail if it's not correct. And here I'm going to go ahead and say watch. Dash dash watch forces this watch to build it each and every time. And so let's go ahead and start that watch. And we'll see it builds it pretty quickly, three seconds. And if I make some change to my project, like let's go to the app view and say my v examples. As soon as I make that change, it recompiles and it has some things cached so it's even quicker. And so that gives me that development experience I want. But there's a couple of problems here. First of all, the code that's now being generated here isn't development code. So the first thing I want to do is be able to add here a switch that says mode is development. This will make the outputted files easier to debug because they won't be the tight tree shaken versions. They'll be ones that are closer to your source code. So it'll be easier to compile. But we also need one more thing. And that is we need to ask the build over here in Vite config to say source maps equals true, right? We want to be able to build those as well. Now notice I changed the Vite config and the watch didn't update because it is only watching the source code. It's not watching the configuration files. So here we'll need to stop it and I'll relaunch it. Now we have that change just so we can see that what we now have in the assets are the files plus the map files for all the JavaScript. And so now we should be able to debug it in an easier way. But if I'm hosting this in my own project, in my own server side project, these hash codes are going to get in the way because every time this builds, I'm going to need to figure out what those hash codes are and inject them onto the page where I'm trying to pull in this index.js and this vendor.js and this index CSS, right? And so I'm going to use, in my case, ASP.NET Core, I'm going to use their cache busting instead of relying on the build here to have the cache busting. But in order to do this, I need to do something a little more complex, and that is I need to tell Rollup some options. And so what is Rollup? Rollup is the underlying compile library that's doing the compilation for us. In the Vue CLI, they were using Webpack. In the case of V, it's using Rollup instead. And what I want to do here in the options is to tell it how I want to output the files. By default, there's really three files here. Entry, file names. We'll come back to what those are. And then there's chunk file names. So entry are the index.js files of the world and the CSS files. They're both matching the same things. Chunks are as the application gets bigger and you're going to allow it to create multiple chunks that are downloaded as needed. Those will be named there. And then we also have asset file names. Asset file names are everything else, so all sorts of names. So for entry file names, I'm going to start with what the default is, which is name hash.js. In fact, it's the same for chunk, because each chunk will have its own unique name. And asset file names is very similar, but has the extension depending on what kind of asset is being thrown out there. For me, I want to get rid of the hash. So I have to override this instead of having the default to specify them without that hash in them. And if I wanted to continue to put them in an assets folder, I could, but because I don't know where in my hierarchy this is, I tend to just create them all in the same level. So there's less confusion about where they're at. I'm just going to put them all in this app folder instead of having an asset. And because we have other stuff here, while I'm here, I'm going to also say empty output directory true. And so every time we do a build, I'm going to make sure that this whole folder in app is cleared out before I start building it again. And this is just make sure I don't get extraneous files for one reason or another. And so let's stop this again. And I'll go ahead and watch one last time to see if we're getting what we really want here. And now that's built, it's all in this root right now. We're still getting the map files. We're still getting the output, but we're getting none of those chunk names. And so I've now made those changes to the Vite config as well as the package.json to allow me to more easily integrate with these other projects. Now, will I do all my development using Watch in these files? Probably not. I'm probably still going to spend most of my time in dev because it's the easiest development sort of story. When I finally get to the actual build part of it, having both the build and the watch there as options in case I need to really debug it inside another container, these changes will really help us do that. 
So I'll make these files available. I'll put them in the uh, video notes down below. And uh, thanks for joining me for another coding short. My name is Sean Wildermuth. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Or if you don't like it, feel free to dislike. The, those are kind of going away. But please leave a comment. Tell me what you did or didn't like so that I can improve as I keep on doing these things. I'll see you next time on Coding Shorts.